Hey there everyone, I recently made a video on which players are the highest value to acquire in your live starts. I'll link that in the comments section. Today I'm going to be creating an all-star team based on these players, essentially getting the players that are the highest value at each position. So I compiled a list of 26 names that I believe are the best possible. So we're going to be doing the reds for this because they have got a pretty solid budget overall. And they also have none of the players that we are looking for. So the very first thing that we're going to do is go for Chris Archer. I'm going to completely ignore the financials and pretty much everything else because the only thing that really matters is these players performing this year. So Archer, as you can see, he's a pretty good overall pitcher. He's got some solid four-pitch arsenal, uh, average movement and control, good stamina. So he is perfectly capable of being a top-of-the-rotation pitcher. And of course, Archer is on a pretty expensive deal for the Pirates, so they're going to be anxious to get rid of him. As we can see, they're asking for a 29-year-old relief pitcher, Anthony Disclefani, who's actually a starter, but is significantly worse than Archer overall. So we're willing to give him up without hesitation so that we can get this pitcher. And while we're here, the Pirates have another player that we're looking to pick up. Prospect, third baseman, Cabrian Hayes. So I will look around for him, and we will add him to this trade. All right, well, I think we're going to throw in Aristides Aquino, and this should seal the deal. I'm going to double check and make sure we don't have any other pirates on this list, but I do not believe so. All right, we're going to see if they are willing to retain any of Chris Archer's contract, and then we will complete this deal. Actually, you know what, while we're here, we might as well just add a couple more players because we can. So let's throw in that pitching prospect, see if there's anyone on the MLB roster we're potentially interested in. All right, and we will complete the trade. Perfect. All right, now we're going on to our next player, another pitcher, Michael Kopech. So Kopech is going to follow up in the rotation behind Archer, he's likely going to be our number three pitcher, actually. As you can see, he's got four pitches as well. His stamina is lower. His control is a bit of an issue. Uh, his personality is problematic, but overall, he's a quality pitcher who is not too expensive to pick up, so we're going for him. All right, let's check out Jesse Winker here. Overall, he's not too bad. We might save him for a later trade. Tucker Barnhart's a catcher. Uh, he's actually not a bad catcher, but nonetheless. And Lodolfo... Okay, I think we're going to give up Lodolfo here. And we have some more White Sox to pick up, I believe. Yes, we do. All right, we're going to pick up Luis Gonzalez, who is an outfielder. He is in here somewhere. Perfect. All right, and it does not take anything else to pick him up. He is going to be our starting right fielder. Okay, are there any other White Sox players? Nope, so now we're just going to go for whoever we want. Let's see about Madrigal. Looks like they're willing to trade him, but only for pieces that we're going to probably need to get other players. So instead, we're going to look at other guys like Zach Birdie and Ian Hamilton and Andrew Vaughn, who we're almost certainly not going to be able to get. Okay, who else do they have? Tyler Johnson. All right. Actually, why don't we see if they're willing to give us Dylan Cease? Nope. All right, we'll just take this package, see how much of the contracts they will retain, and then we will move on to the next set of players. All right, they're willing to retain literally everything, so we could probably actually get even more than this out of this trade if we wanted. I'm just going to leave it here for the sake of time. All right, next on our list is Corbin Burns of the Milwaukee Brewers. He is likely going to be our number two pitcher behind Archer. He's got a nice four-pitch mix himself, above average stamina. The control isn't ideal, but he's got good movement as well. He's basically a slightly better version of Kopech with a good personality. All right, well, their asking price is a little higher than you'd like to see, ideally. 
but nonetheless this is something we can afford. Castillo is not quite as good as Burns overall, so this is a trade package that we can give up, and we'll see if there's anything else we can get. Normally uh, Burns is a little bit cheaper. Devin Williams is on the list of players we're looking to pick up. We can get him. That is good. Are there any other Brewers here? Uh, it does not seem so, so now we're just going to see if we can get other players. All right, I don't think that's worth it for Terang. All right, we might as well check in on uh, Keston Hira. Okay, that's not going to happen. So now let's see if they're willing to give up anybody less than Castillo. What do we think of Suarez? I think we can give up Suarez here. All right. And now let's see how much of these contracts they're willing to retain. Again, this is some. This is one of those cases where we could probably get a better deal than we're getting. But for the sake of time, I'm just rushing through this. All right, now we're going on to Alex Reyes of the Cardinals. So he is another similar pitcher of this type. He's got a good arsenal overall. His movement and control, or his control in particular, is probably better than that, yep. So overall, he's not going to be an ideal pitcher because of the lower control, but he is perfectly capable as a starter. Okay, it looks like now we're giving up Tucker Barnhart. Let's see if we can't get Jack Flaherty, which I seriously doubt we will. No, okay. Uh, let's see, who else do they have? Harrison Bader. I actually do believe we have another Cardinal on this list, so we're going to look for Junio Fernandez, and he is not going to cost us anything extra, so now we're just going to go searching. And once again, for the sake of time, oh wait, Setelej is usually pretty good, I think. So we can expect him to be better in that. Cody Whitley as well. So if this is cheap, we will... Okay, I don't think that's worth it. We're not getting Cody Whitley. So we're just going to ask them to retain Reyes's contract, and then we are going to go on to the next trade. All right, we're going to round out our rotation with Sandy Alcantara of the Marlins. So Alcantara actually has five or six pitches, five pitches, uh, several of which are pretty good. Overall, he's got good control potential as well. Pretty nice stamina. And just a good pitcher overall. So let's see what it takes to get him. All right, a little bit more than we were hoping for, but Tyler Molly is usually not that good. Yeah, so that's not much of a problem. Let's see if we can't get any other players in this deal as well. Uh, Luan Diaz is high value, so we're going to throw him in, but he is not on our list of players to acquire. Wow, this Jonathan Villar is uh, really interesting. Uh, I'm sure that's a ratings irregularity. It does not look like they've got anyone else too interesting, so I think we're just going to... Actually, let's get some of their useless relievers because these will get trade value, oddly enough. Okay, maybe we could get a different player instead. Yep, okay. So we can actually get some of these more trade chip type guys even though we have absolutely no intention to use them i'm probably going to flip these in later trades all right we have acquired sandy alcantara now we're moving on to relief pitching and we have got quite a few guys to snatch from the orioles so we're going to start with hunter harvey who can also start if you're really desperate but he's going to be a long reliever for us and as you can see, he is really cheap to pick up as Ivan Johnson is all it will take oops from the uh, Orioles to give him up. All right, we're going to throw in Tanner Scott here. He should cost a little bit more. Wow, this is more expensive than most Tanner Scotts, but still just one of the relievers that we got from the Marlins. All right, and now we're moving to the minor leagues, and we are going to grab Zach Pop as well as Ryan Mountcastle, potentially, although he is also not on our list at this time. Okay, well, first we're actually going to have to enable trading of players greater than seven days of injury. Baltimore Orioles. All right, perfect. Let's see if we can't get Mountcastle in here. 
I think this is worthwhile. I mean, Christian Cologne, really? That's pretty funny. Uh, anybody else we like in this pile? Let's see if about Jose Iglesias. That's going to be a no. Alright, I think we're just going to leave it here and then move on to other teams. All right, now we have got Ben Bowden of the Rockies. So Bowden has a really nice stuff profile overall. Uh, he's definitely one of your better built relievers, good for higher leverage situations in many cases. So again, we're trading away another one of the guys. Oh, this is not a guy we got from the Marlins. Never mind, we're not trading him right now. But we can trade away one of these two-star prospects. So let's check this guy out here. Yeah, I don't really have much of a problem giving him up. Okay, so now we're going to check out another player of theirs. Another reliever. Uh, where is he? Tommy Doyle. So he should take very little to pick up in this drill. Yep, here we go. A one-star potential first baseman. No problem. Complete the offer. And there we go. All right, now we're heading back to the... No, we already got him. Okay, we're actually going to the Twins and Fernando Romero, who is one of the better all-around relief pitching prospects in the game. So as you can see, he's got solid movement and control potential. He's also got a pretty solid slider to go with it. So let's see what it takes to pick him up. It will not take anything at all. That's a one-and-a-half star potential pitcher in Matt Gill. Uh, he does not have really anything going for him, so yeah, that's definitely worthwhile. And in the meantime, let's see if there is anybody else we can acquire in this trade. Luis Arias is always a classic, but he's almost impossible to trade for. Huh, interesting. Zach Little, I've never seen this good. Ooh, Hunter Green's actually a good pitching prospect. Off the top of my head. Okay, so we're just going to have them retain Romero's contract and then we'll complete this trade. Or not. Okay, we're just completing this trade then. Up next, we've got Jose Alvarado of the, uh, of the Rays. He's one of your overall higher ability guys. Two nice pitches and a curveball to complement. Solid control, really high movement. String ground baller throws very hard. Very capable closer. Alright, so he is actually much more expensive than we were looking at here. So instead, we're going to just use our backup plan, which we've already picked up in uh, Tommy Doyle. So now we're going to head to Austin Hedges and the San Diego Padres. Hedges is an insanely good defensive catcher with a little bit of hitting ability, but ultimately there is no question that his uh, glove is what's carrying him here. Absolutely one of the top end catchers in the game because of how proficient he is behind the dish. Uh, do not fail to trade for hedges if you can. Josh Naylor with ridiculous potential. It's got to be some kind of scouting craziness. Yeah, I still think it's really funny that Josh Naylor is given such high marks by my scout here. Okay, let's see about Michael Baez. Uh, he is tradable, but not worth trading for. So let's see about some of these other guys here. Maybe Kirby Yates is on the table. It does not seem so. Okay, we're going to check out their prospects. Ooh, Ty France is actually another good one that we could get. I think we don't have too much of a problem. Uh, actually, I would like to see here if any of these guys were potentially overrated by my scout. Uh, yeah, Jose Garcia, it appears. Although he's got pretty good defense, so let's not trade him here. 
Mike Moustakas, I believe he's on a pretty expensive contract, so we will be moving him in this deal. And now we're going to check out the prospects and see if there's anybody here that we would like to get. I know they've got a couple of relievers at the least who are pretty interesting. C.J. Abrams is also a good profile. He doesn't usually end up at shortstop, but he is a very good hitter overall. Uh, Jesse Winker is definitely worth giving up to get C.J. Abrams. They're willing to throw in David Bednar. My guess would be Javi Guerra as well. Yep, there we go. So we pretty much just got everything there. And we will get them to retain as much of this Hedges contract as we can. And then complete this trade. Alright, so now we've picked up a couple more pieces. We're going to move on to Jeff Mathis, who is currently on the Rangers Nashville Sounds affiliate. So as you can see, he has absolutely no bat whatsoever to speak of. He's only a half star overall. So why are we getting him? Because his defense is absolutely elite and he's still going to give us plus value when he's catching so they're literally willing to give him to us for anything because they don't think he's valuable which is of course sorely mistaken by them but they don't know that all right we're going to see if they have any other players that we would potentially be interested in here i don't think so but it does not hurt to check Yeah, I don't have any interest in these players, so we're going to have them retain his contract to as great an extent as we can. Look, they're willing to pay him to play for us. That's our backup catcher right there, guys, Jeff Mathis. All right, now onto our first baseman, Pavin Smith of the Diamondbacks. There are a billion options you could choose, but Smith overall has a really nice profile for getting on base and very solid defense, so he is going to be our choice this time. He's also extremely cheap to acquire, even by these standards. Like, you could easily slot Luan Diaz into this category or any number of players. All right, Tower Stevenson. He's okay, but I don't think he's worth it. Let's see about Zach Gallon, but I seriously doubt they'd give him up. Nope. Kevin Ginkle can be a good add. He's way too expensive here as well. Uh, I'm sure Cattell Marte is unacquirable. All right, time to check out the prospects. Alec Thomas is usually very good. Uh, Corbin Carroll as well. I don't know if he's worth all that. Uh, I think we're just going to seal this trade right here. And head on to our next guy, second baseman, Nicky Lopez of the Rangers. Uh, Nick Madrigal. And Nicky Lopez are basically the same guy, but generally Nicky Lopez is a little bit cheaper to acquire, which is why I have him in here. So as you can see, all we have to give up... Oh, and Ty France, by the way, can easily work for that first base uh, position as well. All we have to give up here is just one relief pitcher, which is, of course, no problem whatsoever for us. So we're going to see if they have anyone else we're interested in, which they actually do. MJ Melendez is an outstanding catching prospect. So we will see what it takes to get him here. I do not have any problem trading Philip Irvin. And we will see if we can get this. No, not Noah Bryant. Uh, we'll see if they have any MLB players, actually, that we're interested in. Trevor Rosenthal could be one. Not at that price. Uh, yeah, I think we're just going to complete this deal right here see how much of Lopez's contract they will retain and there we go all right on to our next guy shortstop Andrelton Simmons of the Angels so he is outstanding defensively uh, keep in mind I do not have ratings greater than 80 overall enabled otherwise his arm would be significantly higher his turn to plays in infield range might be higher and i'm pretty sure a shortstop defense would be higher i don't think that avoid case would be overall he's not a bad hitter he's a good base runner and he is an outstanding fielder which is by far the most important thing you're looking for at shortstop so it looks like he's going to be a little more expensive than we were hoping but nonetheless this is still a more than worthwhile trade so i think i'm going to throw in sunny gray here and we'll see if we can't get anything else in this process. Shohei Otani is always a great pickup. 
And do they have anyone else that we would like to get? David Fletcher is a good utility player. We could use him as our infield utility, potentially. Uh, he's not the player I have listed for it, but he definitely works. All right, I think now we're going to see how much of Simmons' contract they are willing to take. All right, and we're completing this trade. On to third base. Oh, we already got Cabrian Hayes, actually, from the uh, Pirates when we acquired Chris Archer. So now we're going to Evan White of the Mariners. And he will actually be our left fielder. Evan White, as you can see, actually has some very nice outfield defense. His batting profile is similar to Pavin Smith's, although with more gap power and a little less I slash avoid case, a little more power overall. Uh, excellent fielder, very versatile. Great value all around. Really, really nice contract uh, for team control as well that the Mariners are usually willing to retain a good portion of. So I am going to have them do that. Yeah, look, 35%, absolutely nothing extra. We're heading up 65. We're barely going to have to add in more, at least according to them. Yeah, that Gutierrez, he's not much. Um, yeah, here we go. 22-year-old, one-and-a-half star reliever. I mean, he's really a starter, but he still doesn't have too much potential. Let's up it to 85, and once again, they want Gutierrez. He's really not much. They want Sims. He's even easier to give up. And let's kick it to 100 and see what that takes. All right, the Santillan guy. So as you can see, we've gone up for pretty much useless players, and now we're getting our starting left fielder for the next eight, nine years, or a good trade chip later down the road. And we're going to throw in while we're here, Braden Bishop, who will be our backup outfielder, actually. Uh, we're giving up Kyle Farmer, who's near useless. Bishop has outstanding outfield defense. He's a fine starting center fielder, actually. Uh, and he is not a bad hitter overall, either. Actually, instead of getting them to retain his contract, I would like to see if they have any relievers that we can pick up in this trade. All right, we can get Aaron Fletcher, no problem. We can get Wyatt Mills, no problem. And we can get Sam Delplay, no problem. So we can actually pick up the trio of relief prospects as well at no additional cost. And let's see how much of Bishop's contract they'll take, and then we will finish up this trade. All right, now we need uh, Evan White. Or not Evan White, my bad, we already got him. Billy Hamilton of the um, Giants. So Hamilton is okay at getting on base. A very nice base runner. So he's probably your number nine batter here. And he is an unbelievably talented defensive center fielder, which makes him one of the best values in the game. Because his glove is so good, he can really help your team on defense. All right, well, it looks like this Michael Siani is the only player they want that I'm really willing to give up at this point. Uh, I don't believe the Giants really have anyone else too worth acquiring, so let's just see if they'll retain any of Hamilton's contract. Yep, and we'll just leave it there. Obviously, we could probably get more out of that trade, but we're not going to for the time being. Next, we're going to grab our DH, Howie Kendrick, and I will enable the DH after I acquire him. Uh, is it spelled with just a K? I can't spell. Uh, okay, well, he plays for the Washington Nationals, so we'll just go there. All right, well, uh, here is Kendrick. I don't know what I spelled wrong in his name. So as you can see, actually, this is probably not. Yeah, this is more accurate. Uh, Kendrick is a very nice contact, all-around solid hitter who costs absolutely nothing to pick up. Uh, this is one of your better DH values in the game. Yeah, Wade Miley is really not going to hurt us. So I have no problem making this trade. Why not just for the kicks, see if we can get Juan Soto. No surprises there. 
Yadiel Hernandez. Uh, I don't really see anybody too exciting here, so let's check out the prospects and see if we can't add anyone. I think we're just going to trade for Kendrick here, see how much they're willing to retain. All right, they'll take on 10% of his contract. And there we go. We've now acquired our designated here. So we just have two players left to get. We're going to go to their division rivals, uh, the Philadelphia Phillies, and pick up Scott Kingery. Where are you, Scott Kingery? Did I pass him? Here we go. So Kingery is a similar profile to Evan White, except he's more versatile. Uh, he's got another pretty good contract for the long term. It's a little bit less effective overall, but still not bad. Looks like Kingery is going to be a little expensive to pick up. Actually, instead of getting Kingery, because in this save he does seem uh, particularly difficult, we're just going to run with instead David uh, Fletcher as our utility infielder, so or our super utility player. And we will get Devin Marrero as our uh, another, I can't spell anybody's names today. Uh, Devin Marrero is a really solid defensive uh, utility player. Ah, that's why it's spelled with an E. So as you can see, he's got that excellent third base defense. His profile resembles Nolan Arenado's. He's actually a starting caliber shortstop if you train him up a little bit. Obviously, he can play second base very well as well. He can. He's not bad to start at literally any position, but you can use him as your utility guy instead, which is what we are going to be doing here. All right, and now we have built our entire high-value team. So next, we just need to make room on our roster for all of the guys that we're actually going to start. So what I'm going to do here is actually just release all of these players. Keep in mind that guys like Rosselli Iglesias, Trevor Bauer, Joey Votto, I mean, literally everyone on this roster would get very good trade value. So... What we're giving up here is probably enough talent to get us on number one overall farm, but for the sake of time, I'm just releasing them all instead. All right, so now we're going to just take all the players that we've acquired and dump them onto our active roster. There are some in the minor leagues that we're going to have to promote as well, but in general, this is pretty much the team we've got right now. So I'm going to quickly move stuff around, and then I will come back once I've got that done. All right, well, everything is set up. Now, keep in mind that we built this team with a pretty average budget. We released a whole bunch of players rather than trading them away, so our farm is significantly weaker than it would have been, even though it is still quite strong, and we're not doing strategies or anything, so this team isn't perfectly optimized. Now, here's what we've got. We only have one left-handed pitcher, unfortunately. But that's all right. That's just how it turned out. So, what now what we're looking at is... A pretty okay rotation. Uh, this is probably about average, maybe a little bit below average. Uh, the stamina is not excellent, but Chris Archer can eat innings at the top of the rotation, and our bullpen has a little bit of stamina as well. From the lineup, we have uh, pretty mediocre hitting across the board, but we've got some good fielders overall, and they should really help us out on defense. Also keep in mind that this is a young core, for the most part, with players who are still developing, and therefore this is not the best that we would necessarily have. So I think we can now start the season, and let's just see how well we do. Now, of course, we did acquire some prospects along the way, so our farm is probably still in the top 10 pretty easily. We'll see exactly how good very soon. All right, let's check it out. Where are we? 
All right, we're actually only 14th right now, but again, we could have had a much better farm system if we'd actually made an effort to trade for players instead of uh, dumping all our normal guys. And keep in mind that the Reds have a really weak farm at the start. All right, well, Devin Marrero has now signed with us, so we have our entire team set. That's not who I meant to put there. Okay, Devin Marrero. Uh, let's have him back up third base as well. I think he can be a defensive substitution. No, I mean, both men are pretty good defensively, so I think we're all right there. Actually, let's see if he's got any crazy platoon splits. No. So he's probably uh, only effective for us as a backup, which is not a problem. All right, well, we lost our first game of the year. Chris Archer pitched really well, actually. Uh, yeah, he had a good game. I think our offense just struggled badly, other than Austin Hedges, who hit a home run. Oh, yes, I should disable trade notifications. There we go. So this is not the best start to the season, as uh, I'm sure you can imagine. We've only scored three runs, <laughs> which honestly is not likely to improve much. Our defense is really our strong spot here. Uh, this is not how I imagined this season going. But I guess we have actually started to pick up the pace a little bit. Not quite on par with what we'd like to see. I think this team should be competing for a playoff spot. Uh, not that it matters, but let's check out the OSA thing. Yeah, they hate everybody we have. Uh, they don't like Hedges, and they're okay with Simmons, and everyone else is just terrible, according to them. Uh, obviously, we're going to well outperform that expectation. It's just a matter of how much. Well, I think we need to disable injuries here. Oh, wait, I think I'm playing in challenge mode. Yeah, okay, so never mind. We can't do that. Uh, so this is a little bit of an issue. Austin Hedges has injured himself. So that happened. Keep in mind that we've also, we're have also we also using guys like Shohei Otani, even Triple A instead of the MLB, because uh, we're keeping this strictly to the high value players all right so now we're gonna look for a backup trade option at catcher who are our options here okay let's see about caleb joseph no no we need someone a little better than that tyler flowers of the atlanta braves so he's a really good fielder himself Probably actually a little bit better batter overall. Wow, okay, that's not happening. Martin Maldonado. I can't spell anybody's names today, so we're going to once again have to search for him. All right, perfect. So he's another really high defensive catcher. He's actually got just the similar build to Hedges, but worse, so... All right, let's see if they are willing to retain any. Actually, you know what? Another high-value player we can pick up is Roberto Osuna. And because we desperately need relief pitching, we're going to pick him up. Michael Brantley's another one. I think we're going to loophole and grab him here, actually. All right, so we're actually going to improve our team with a couple of uh, higher-value players in this trade. Let's see if they won't take on any of Asuna's deal or Brantley's, potentially. Yeah, okay. I think we're just going to leave it here. So now we've added a whole bunch of uh, higher ability guys. All right, Osuna's injured right now, so he can't play for us. Maldonado's going to be our starting catcher, and I will figure out what we're doing with Brantley. We've got to keep Evan White in the lineup. 
but he bats well against righty or lefties, and Paven Smith bats better against righties slightly. I don't necessarily want to platoon them though. All right, actually, we're gonna send Evan White down to AAA to develop. And we will let Brantley start in left. All right, so we've added another higher contact hitter. Brantley is excellent against righties. So let's push Paven Smith back here. He's still very good against lefties, of course, but he is excellent against right-handed pitching. All right, I think we're going to have to leave this as is. And move on. So Evan White actually was performing very well. We've got to keep him in the lineup. Uh, I guess Paven Smith is a lower value player, so we'll demote him instead. Because Evan White is like the ultimate value. He just cannot be topped. So left fielder Evan White is now going to be playing first base again. He is fine down there against righties and fine up there against lefties. All right. I think this lineup is looking set again, so we will continue. Yeah, we're just suffering injuries left and right. I'm sure our trainer is terrible. Yeah, Andrelton Simmons has a three-week injury. That's not what we wanted to see. Evan White's up to one war already. That's impressive. So our run scored is going up a little bit. Our runs against is not quite where you'd expect it to be. It's a little higher, but our pitching is not super talented at the time. Although we're Starting to approach a playoff spot. Oh, hey, we swept the Giants. Of course, Fernando Romero suffered a setback in his recovery from an injury. Why wouldn't he? So Evan White is just absolutely crazy. And then, of course, our defensive phenoms, Andrelton Simmons and Billy Hamilton, are following him up in war. Uh, mostly because of their defense. Mostly. They're batting better than we would expect. Oh, of course Corbin Burns did that. So we just lost one of our key pitchers for the year. Alright, at this point we're calling up Shohei Otani exclusively as a pitcher though. Okay, so we're using Otani as a pitcher because Corbin Burns got badly injured. He will be sent back down when Corbin Burns recovers. All right, and we actually made it into first place temporarily. Uh, Andrelton Simmons got hurt again, and yet is somehow playing like a legend. Yeah, he's now leading our team in war. Playing through an injury, by the way, on pace for a 10-war year with an outstanding offensive performance. Uh, Corbin Burns actually is still leading our team in wins above replacement. All right, Fernando Romero is healthy again. Let's see if he's better than anyone we have on our roster. I like Ian Hamilton's control, but he could use a little bit of development. Hunter Harvey is our long reliever, so I don't want to demote him right now. I think it's going to be Hamilton, or maybe actually, yeah, it's got to be Hamilton. All right, so we now have Fernando Romero to be an addition to our bullpen. Slight improvement over uh, Ian Hamilton, who we had before. So we'll see how this goes. Evan White, Billy Hamilton... Andrelton Simmons continue to rake with their gloves. They're probably taking their gloves when they go up to bat and just swinging with that. Michael Kopeck dealing with an injury that is probably going to recover before his next start. Corbin Burns is still leading our team in war, followed closely by Tanner Scott. Oh, Chris Archer is going to miss a start. Uh, that's unfortunate. We're going to have to put him on the IL for that. I don't even know if we have anybody to replace him. 
Well, we're calling up an absolute emergency. Uh, a player who is not, you know, actually we're just going to trade for somebody else. Because that's how I roll. All right, who do I have here on this list? Brian Abreu, or, you know what, let's just do Ranger Suarez. He should be pretty easy to get. All right, Ranger Suarez is going to be our spot starter now. I don't like that we'd have to give up these players to get him, though. Fine, we're giving them Roberto Osuna. Let's see if we can't get Hector Neris, though. That's a no. Uh, do they have anybody we like? Scott Kingery. Still like Kingery. Okay, they're now willing to give us Kingery. I actually don't think we want him now because we do have uh, our other guys. Uh, yeah, I think at this point we'll just take dumping Osuna's salary onto the Phillies and uh, Ranger Suarez. Okay, we've got ourselves a new spot starter. Let's throw him into the rotation. Uh, he seems to be exhausted, which is really unfortunate. Otani had an excellent debut. That's good. Oh, hey, he's a lefty. What do you know, guys? We've picked up a lefty reliever. Well, a uh, starter, but he might actually... We might keep him on in relief. Hey, look, Evan White getting Rookie of the Month. Seth Elledge. All right. On we go as Corbin Burns still leads our team in pitcher war. And Tanner Scott is still second. I don't understand what our rotation is doing for that to be the case, but I'm happy about it. Especially since the defense is certainly helping them out. Oh, great. Michael Brantley's hurt. Okay, hopefully he doesn't... Oh, he's got two injuries he's dealing with. Okay, that's that's injured list territory. Okay, we're calling up Paven Smith again. Maybe Ryan Mountcastle. No, Paven Smith. And he will have to step back into our lineup. We'll have to move Evan White back to left field temporarily. Keep in mind that Evan White is currently a hole in left field. He trains up well there, but he is only a 30-grade fielder right now, so he is not playing well at all defensively. He's probably costing us plenty of runs right now. How's Paven Smith done in AAA? He's actually been quite good with AAA, so hopefully that's a sign of things to come. Andrelton Simmons continues to lead our team in war with the outstanding year he's having. I still can't believe how well Billy Hamilton is doing out of that nine hole. We are officially leading the NL Central again. Billy Hamilton has passed up Evan White on the war leaderboard. Uh, I'm sure Evan White playing left field doesn't help, but I can't believe he's actually an above average hitter right now. That's not going to be sustainable. He's done excellent with his stealing as well, which I don't think is going to continue. The defense will continue to be there, though, and Tanner Scott has officially passed up Corbin Burns as our pitching war leader. Good job, Tanner Scott. You have yet to give up a home run. I'm proud of you. I'm not proud of the rest of our pitchers who should be doing better. Yeah, this is just proof that your value teams are still extremely competitive. Again, we could have acquired some very high-end prospects with the players that we literally cut. We had plenty of cash left to spend that we didn't use. Oh, hey, look, Nicky Lopez is now on the leaderboards. Go, Lopez. Yeah, this team is not optimized. This was just a rush job stuck together so that we could quickly uh, make something here. All right, Paven Smith is getting demoted again to make room for the healthy Michael Brantley. We'll have Chris Archer back in two days, so hopefully we don't need Ranger. Oh, great, Ranger Suarez is going to have to do one more start. All right, well... 
with Michael Brantley back, this team should continue to play much better. I guess it doesn't help that Chris Archer is on the injured list. That's probably part of the reason he has not been able to... Oh, hey, look, Austin Hedges is back as well. Sweet, so Martin Maldonado. You know, actually, Jeff Mathis is worse. We'll keep Maldonado. Cool, you're getting DFA'd, Mathis. I'm sure nobody is going to pick you up. Okay, we can demote Hunter Harvey to AAA and use Ranger Suarez as our long reliever, which I'm liking right now as our best option. Oh, you know what? I promised Otani would be demoted. We're going to have to do him instead, which sucks because he actually pitched pretty well for us, I think. Yeah, Otani was worth a one win above replacement for us. He pitched quite well. Oops, yeah, Archer's not relieving. And yeah, let's start Archer. Who was in our rotation before? I think we bumped somebody or something. Corbin Burns, that's right. That's who Otani was in for. So actually, we can bring Otani back. Uh, goodbye. Hunter Harvey. Welcome back, Shohei Otani. Goodbye, Ranger Suarez. All right, well, this should definitely help the team out a little bit. I'm sure Suarez has a f little bit on the splits. No, not really, so we can't use him as a specialist, but he's there. Andrelton Simmons continues to rake. The NL Central continues to be an incredibly weak division. Howie Kendrick continues to be not healthy as he deals with two minor injuries simultaneously. Shohei Otani is actually second in pitching war right now, but keep in mind that he is still on my high-value player list, so this is not technically cheesing it. And he's not even leading our team in pitcher war. Somehow, some way, Tanner Scott has been our best reliever. Seriously? Wow. I didn't even know that was a contract clause. Okay, well, you're just staying indefinitely designated for assignment, Mathis. I'm not doing anything with you. Oh, uh, I actually have to do something. All right, fine. You're getting released. I really hate to do that. I'm curious about the chemistry right now. So we have a couple bad players, but overall this is actually really good chemistry. We have three captains, two of whom, well, we would have three captains regardless of our build. Raid Bishop's a good leader. We've got Spark Plugs and Lopez and Fletcher, and Archer is a good prankster, so there we go. This unintentionally ended up being quite a good chemistry build. Andrelton Simmons is just being ridiculous. I mean, this is all his glove now because he's not overperforming offensively that much. And I still think his value is severely underrated. Well, Luis Gonzalez just got injured. He's been having a pretty good year. That's unfortunate. So you know what that means? That means that we're using Shohei Otani as a two-way player. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. So we went from we weren't using Shohei Otani at all to now Shohei Otani is a two-way player. Oh, I totally forgot to actually put Hedges back in a starting role. That's probably been hurting us a little bit. 
And yeah, Otani should be batting towards the middle of the order. He is a huge upgrade over um, Luis Gonzalez. Even though Gonzalez is a fine right fielder, don't get me wrong. All right, now where in the lineup to put him? I know he bats better against righties than lefties, but he's still plenty good against lefties. I think he bats fourth against lefties and probably third against righties. There we go. That's our lineup now. Guys, Shohei Otani is an MVP caliber player. He has not ideal builds, both as a pitcher and as a batter. But overall, the value is just so good, you cannot afford to miss out on it. Tanner Scott still has yet to give up a home run. Cool. Zach Birdie is looking outstanding right now as a high leverage reliever. Howie Kendrick is looking a little disappointing, but he's still putting up good numbers, which is what we've got him for. Brayden Bishop actually dropping his uh, overall abilities in the eyes of our uh, scout. We're going to skip the draft for the same reason that we've been skipping everything else. I don't want this to be a 20-year stream video. All right, well, Tyler Soderstrom, who is my least favorite draft pick oh got selected in the first round i hate soderstrom he's a terrible catching profile he has no defensive ability and that makes him useless hey look chris archer is now leading our team in pitcher war which is pretty much what you'd expect to see from him all right we can live with delplane being out Michael Brantley's up there on our war leaderboards, despite the fact that he was a midseason acquisition. Wow, that is that is just horrendous. Corbin Burns is having terrible luck for us. That does mean, however, that Shohei Tani is going to stick in our rotation. I'm sure he hasn't been doing too bad with the bat. Devin Williams is now on our war leaderboards. Otani's actually been poor as a pitcher now. He's really dropped off the performance. He's been a very nice hitter, though, since we've stuck him in the lineup. Let's see how Billy Hamilton's doing. So he still has yet to be caught on his steal attempts. His value with his bat has gone to where it should be, really. So, yeah, the dream is over, but he's still quite effective. And quite effective is what's getting us to the playoff, guys. Right now, we're very likely to make the playoffs. And it's not because we're dominant. It's because we're a very overall good team. Who even is Jesus Torres? Why do I care? Andrelton Simmons is absolutely outstanding i mean this is really what your elite defensive shortstops are going to do for you look at that outstanding 15 zone runs and this is mid-season too he's not done yet by any stretch oh it was tanner scott who got hurt no we can't afford to lose tanner scott no it was chris archer who actually did get hurt but we cannot afford to lose Tanner Scott. He's actually been a lockdown closer for us. I think I'll promote Devin Williams to that role if he is legitimately hurt. Hopefully it's just a minor injury. Okay, whatever. Four days. I don't care. I'm not even going to do the international free agent signing period. 
This is the problem with not turning off injuries. They happen left and right and right and left. Haha, uh -huh. Evan White is a home... Is Evan White's from Cincinnati? No, he's from Kentucky. Huh. All right, well, it's looking very likely at this point that we will make the playoffs. Chris Archer has actually been quite the ace. All right, Luis Gonzalez is back, which means that Shohei Otani will two-way no more. He actually did not overwhelm us. I mean, he pretty much just gave us the kind of performance that we would expect from Luis Gonzalez, plus a little bit more, of course, but not a huge difference. Unless Gonzalez has improved significantly, which he has not. Yeah, he's still a very nice defensive right fielder. He is definitely, he gets credit for that. Uh, I love Devin Marrero. I think he's a great fielding option. I mean, he is legitimately good enough to be your starting shortstop if you want him. I don't understand what the deal is with Otani and the rest of our pitching staff, but they haven't been bad. They just have not been as good as our relievers. All right, we're not signing anybody which really pains me because I love the international free agent amateurs. And we have fallen, oh, we temporarily fell out of first place. Ranger Suarez is out for five weeks. That's disappointing. He was actually pitching very well for us. 0.8 war. All right, well, Ian Hamilton's coming back. Oh, actually, no, we need Hunter Harvey. We need a long reliever. Oh, no, our bullpen and starting pitching is absolutely exhausted. Good thing we have Archer. He can give us length. But, okay, well, Scott's Scott's good. That's That's all we really need. All we have to do is just stay on top of the division. That can't be that hard, can it? Please, please, don't make me look stupid. I know what I'm doing. These injuries have really not been the best for us by any means. This has been a bumpy road. Our offense is still really bad, but our defense, I'm sure, is outstanding. Where's our runs against? Yeah, second best defense in the league, which makes our mediocre offense very acceptable. And keep in mind that this is all from our uh, top tier fielders. This is all Austin Hedges, Andrelton Simmons, Billy Hamilton, really. Chris Archer is an all-star. I'm sure we had more than that. I'm sure Simmons made the all-star game. Let's see here. Chris Archer. What do you know? We're leading our division with only one all-star.
All right. Wow, Michael Brantley must have really surged because he was not even close to that recently. Well, Shohei Otani has passed up Devin Williams on the war leaderboards, which he should have a long time ago. We're starting to pull ahead of the Brewers for first place, so it's looking pretty good. It seems like we have a very good chance of winning the division at this point. Alex Reyes has been outstanding, actually, as our number five starter. I did not expect him to be anywhere near this good. I'm sure his FIP is much higher with that 198 BABIP, but we'll take what we have. Probably getting a lot of help from our defense there. Well, we just lost Hunter Harvey for the season. And we don't have Ranger Suarez back for a bit. Which means we're just going to have to live with Ian Hamilton until he's healthy. We have no long relievers in the meantime. You know what? We can probably use Sam Delplane as a long reliever in this emergency situation. All right, well, here we go. We're in the stretch, guys. We're pulling well ahead of the Brewers. It seems, oh, of course, Del playing gets hurt a day before Ranger Suarez gets back. Devin Williams is hurt. Yeah, we're just losing everybody now. Okay, Nate Jones, you're officially promoted. We're now using somebody who's not even on the uh, high value list. No, you know what? You're going to be a long reliever. I don't care if I kill your stamina. All right. Nate Jones, you probably didn't even get to play. Okay. DFA time. If you're bad, you get DFA'd. That's how it works. Oh, I didn't even know we had to negotiate with our players. Whatever. Who cares? We're not playing for the future. We want the World Series now! Tanner Scott is once again leading our team in pitcher war. He is not usually this good, guys. He still has yet to give up a home run. That is just outrageous. That is completely unique for a player of his caliber, or really any caliber. Nobody goes this long without giving up home runs. Everybody does at some point. Wow, Chris Archer must have fallen off a cliff because he is just... Not where he was before. Okay, you're gone. Goodbye, Nate Jones. You're a waste of my time. Yeah, so uh, Chris Archer was up to about two war at one point. Now he's all the way down here. He's added seven uh, 0.75 ERA recently. Shohei Otani is doing much better, though. About where you'd expect him to be. We're still nine-ish games up on the Brewers. That seems to be holding steady. Yeah, we've not changed. Like, every time we lose, they lose. Every time we win, they win. So we're not gaining or losing ground really right now. Michael Brantley, really excellent season so far from him. Shohei Otani, Tanner Scott, Chris Archer. Howie Kendrick became our first player to win Player of the Week. Sam Delplane is healthy. Who do we demote? Ian Hamilton, I believe. Okay, I just want to take a moment and appreciate 
this build. So, Michael Brantley, Andrelton Simmons, Austin Hedges, Zach Birdie, who's developed significantly this season, and Shohei Ota oh, and Chris Archer are our only players of oh, Devin Williams. Okay, so relievers, Shohei Otani, Chris Archer, Andrelton Simmons, Michael Brantley, and Austin Hedges are our only players above three-star potential, and only one of them is four or three-and-a-half-star potential. Or overall, my bad. Just standing how bad this team is on paper and yet how well it plays out. This is not a one-time fluke thing either. This is legit legitimately a very good team yeah look at how well osa thinks of our guys now that they've had an opportunity to gain some at bats and the fact that we now have andrelton simmons instead of uh, evan white getting the at bats in left field that one probably helps out quite a bit nonetheless this team overall downright very solid i don't think they normally would play out this well we've been helped along a little bit by a couple key players but this is still a very, very good team that takes nothing to get and gives you a ton of space to trade for prospects. Don't forget, it's also, by and large, filled with young players with high potential, so you're likely to see some key development and eventually an even better team. Well, Shohei Otani decided to pick up the ace thing and run with it. Well, we just lost one of our lower tier relievers. Welcome back, Ian Hamilton. Welcome back, Paven Smith, because rosters have been expanded. I'm not actually going to use him, but might as well have him. Yeah, Paven Smith's developed quite a bit. Now we're looking at a pretty good player. Who absolutely tore up Triple A, by the way. Just think about the trade value that some of these guys would get at the end of the season as well. Like, if you wanted to, you could easily flip this core off and get really excellent returns. Luis Gonzalez is not coming back anytime soon, except he's still on our roster. It's probably some mild injury that's just nagging him. Chris Archer and Shohei Otani are finishing the year in style. We have secured a playoff spot. We have officially clinched a ticket to the postseason. We're very likely to win the division. Great year. Yikes, the Dodgers had an excellent season. Youch. They are going to be tough in the playoffs. Tanner Scott had a 36-game save streak where he didn't give up a single home run, and then he finally gave up two home runs. But wow. I mean, just wow. That's impressive. A 164 ERA. I don't know how he didn't make the All-Star game, honestly. I mean, he was carrying the team in the first half, really. Well, we've clinched the division. We have officially won the National League Central Division with a basket of players who the AI does not value at all. We might actually have a shot. Oh, no, we can't win 100 games now. But we came pretty darn close to winning 100 games with a team of players that are just ridiculously undervalued. Yep, 98 games. We won 98 games, had a better than 600 winning percentage. Our highest war player was Shohei Otani at 4 war pitching, 4.5 war total. And yeah, just, just look at how ridiculous that is. We didn't even use him in right field for most of the season. So now it's really just a question of how are we going to do in the playoffs? Uh, I would not bet on getting past the championship series against the Dodgers. But I think we've got a legitimate shot at winning the division series. In fact, we're probably uh, better than whoever the NL East division winner is. 
yeah, the Braves. I think we're probably at least on par with them. All right, let's see how our guys do. Ooh, who's not in the lineup? Who are we missing? A first baseman. What happened to Evan White? Why is he not on the playoff roster? <laughs> Somebody decided that Paven Smith should have a spot on the playoff roster over Evan White. I think not. I think I think we're going to do the smart thing here and stick with our first baseman. It's a good thing I noticed that because that could have been disastrous, genuinely disastrous. All right, let's quickly save the game here. Tanner Scott had an outstanding, unbelievable year for a guy with low stamina as a reliever. You never see this kind of thing. How are we going to do against the Braves? We won game one. We won game two. We swept the Braves. We have swept our way into the National League Championship Series. Can we pull off a miracle against the Los Angeles Dodgers? I don't care, lookouts. Go away. We lost games one and two. We won game three. It looks like we're going to lose. I don't see us. Oh, yeah, the Dodgers already swept us. Well, that was disappointing, but nonetheless, we made it to the National League Championship Series with a team that was absolute garbage on the surface. So, guys, just keep this in mind. You can legitimately build a contending team, a very good contending team, with a group of players who are completely useless. I literally cut everyone on the Reds team that I did not trade to acquire the players I'm using. Uh, I used Shohei Otani as a step-in for Corbin Burns, but he didn't outperform him by as much as you would probably think. We won 98 games. We made the National League Championship Series only to lose to the Dodgers. But this is absolutely something you can do. Focus on your prospects with your trades. Get a good young core of undervalued players and then just build up for the future. It will really pay off for your team in the long run. Uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. I hope this was really helpful to you in showing you how good your team can be on a cheap budget.